Well, aren't we all tired of the flat earth arguments around atmospheric pressure containers and violations of the second law of thermodynamics? Now, I will start with a quick quiz question for flat earthers. What is the most thermodynamically favorable shape for an object upon which a radially isotropic force acts towards the center of mass? If you really want, you can discuss that one in the comment section. Now, however much you explain to a flat earther that gravity actually keeps the atmosphere in, they will just go, uh, uh, you still need a container. Uh, demonstrate to me that you can keep a gas pressure without a container. Uh, you're violating the second law of thermodynamics. Well, I could spend some time discussing the second law of thermodynamics. I could talk about macrostates, microstates, entropy, energy gradients, and all that, but fuck it, they won't understand anyway. Now, of course, they probably won't understand the following either. I am aware that no flat earther is actually willing to listen to what I have to say, and I'm not naive enough to think that I could actually change your flat earther's mind. Flat earth just provides a nice context to talk physics. The approach I'm going to take on this video, it's not about the second law of thermodynamics or pressure, although they may be brought up. We are going to look at what a container actually is. Now, this may seem a bit trivial, but I assure you that's, there's more to it. Now, to set things up, we just take an airtight box with six solid walls, and inside it, there is a gas. This gas exerts some force on the walls, and this force divided by the surface area of the walls gives you pressure. So first we ask where this force actually comes from. Now this force comes from the gas particles hitting the walls and bouncing off and as the momentum of the gas particles changes we can conclude that the walls exert a force on the particles and after all Newton's third law applies so there is a force on the wall exerted by the particles. As the gas particles are also moving we can conclude that they have some finite kinetic energy. Now, for a quick and dirty derivation showing how all of this relates to pressure, I refer you to my Basic Physics for Flat Earthers series, where you can find that uh, gas pressure is also a measure of energy density. To figure out what a container actually does at a microscopic level, we have to consider where this force actually comes from. And when we go down to the microscopic level, we quickly realize that the walls of our container are not solid at all. Uh, what we have are atoms which are arranged in a very tidy array or lattice. And then it turns out that these atoms are mostly empty space. So around 99.9999% of the atom is just empty space. So the container, the wall, is around 99.9999% empty space. So why would all of this empty space present a barrier to the gas particles? Now to answer this, we have to consider the structure of the atom. However, I won't go into the fine details. Maybe the Bohr model of the atom could be the topic of another few, well, a whole series of videos actually. The atom consists of three particles, positively charged protons, neutral neutrons, and negatively charged electrons. Now the protons and neutrons sit at the center of the nucleus, and all the protons have a positive charge and find each other quite repulsive. But the nuclear forces from the protons and the neutrons are stronger than this repulsive force, and this gluons the whole thing together. Bad joke there. And all this results in a positively charged nucleus. Around the nucleus, we have a few electrons buzzing around, and these guys have a negative charge. In an atom, there are the same number of electrons as there are protons, so on the grand scheme, there is no net charge, but location of these charges is important. Now, I could spend months talking about the different interactions, but for our purposes, uh, this simplification is sufficient. An atom comprises a positively charged core with a negatively charged cloud of electrons around it. Now, when a gas particle is about to collide with the container wall, what happens is that the electron cloud of the gas particle gets close to the electron cloud of the atom in the wall. And as they're both negatively charged, there is a repulsive force between the two. And anytime there is a force, we can start talking about potential energy as well, because force is defined as the negative of the gradient of the potential energy function. On the animation shown, we have a gas particle approaching the barrier. Now, the middle plot shows the potential energy energy as a function of position due to the interactions between the particle and the barrier. The bottom row shows the force then as a function of position. 
Now, when the particles are far away, the potential is pretty much constant and there's no force. But as the particle gets close, then there's a strong force pushing it back. So it accelerates it in the opposite direction. You see, there is a saying that what goes up must come down. A more accurate statement would be what goes up a potential energy gradient must come back down unless it reaches a new equilibrium. And actually, this is all wrapped up in the second law of thermodynamics. Now, during this whole process, none of the parts of the gas particle actually touched any part of the atoms in the container wall. There were just some interactions with the potential energy functions created by the container wall and the gas particle. It then follows that a container contains the gas because the walls present a potential energy barrier. Now, the reason why I phrase this in terms of potential energy is because regardless of whether you subscribe to gravity, droppity, density buoyancy, or fucking fairies, you have to recognize that potential energy increases with height. Therefore, there is a potential energy gradient. And just like how the potential energy increases as the particle approaches the barrier, the potential energy of a particle increases with distance from the Earth's surface. And this is all to say that, yes, you do do need a container to contain the atmosphere and we have one and this container is called gravity. So with that I'd like to thank you for watching and give a special thanks to my patrons who will be appearing on screen shortly.